So you are probably wondering, is it possible to create realistic particles on Roblox? And I'm going to tell you that, yeah, it is. Later on, I'm gonna be featuring some great examples, but for now, as usual, leave a like and subscribe to support the channel, and let's get into the video. So what you are seeing right now is a particle emitter inside of a part. And this particle emitter is using something called a flipbook as you can see from these properties. And before I show how this is done, I'm just going to go to a forum post to explain this. So there was a beta feature added in 2022 with the animated particles with the particle flipbook beta, which later on came into full release in the same year. And what this essentially is, as shown in this example, you can see the particles changing depending on the distance. And you have these different grids like 2x2, 8x8, or 4x4 right here. And that's because these flipbooks use graphics that are essentially just grids filled with these particles. And for example, this is the explosion that I'm gonna be showing later on. And of course, these flipbooks need to be in a PNG format, because otherwise it's going to also render the background of the particles, as well as the demo place from right here. And these flipbooks also have these different properties, like the frame rate layout, the mode, and also an option to start at random grid positions. So the frame rate is pretty self-explanatory, it determines how fast to animate the texture in frames per second. Then you have the layout, where setting it to none is just going to use the normal particle emitter with a single static texture, where the next option, the 2x2, is a form frame animation, and 4x4 is a 16 frame, and lastly 8x8 is 64 frames. So each single one of these graphics in this example is one frame of the animation. And you also have different modes, like you can make the animation loop, the one shot makes it happen only once, the ping pong means that it's going to finish and then go back in order, and then a random is just going to play it in random order. And the rest of this guide is telling you how to create a flipbook texture in Photoshop. And all of this is pretty easy to make, you basically just make a contact sheet with these examples. And alternatively, they give you an option to search for a sprite sheet editor, which gives you the tools for creating these sprite sheets. But that's basically everything for this dev forum post that I just wanted to quickly go over. And let's move to Roblox Studio now. But really quickly, I need to thank everyone who bought my UGC items. There are currently only two on sale, but I will be making more of them whenever I get the funds. You can go and check them out, the link is going to be in the description. And I'm also going to set the donation t-shirts later on, because I had few people already asking me if they could donate, so I'll be getting that ready. But now that we are in studio, we just want to fiercely create a particle emitter. So let's just add a part, and I'm going to set its size to 1x1, one one, and then I'm going to add a particle emitter instant to it. And now it's playing the default particle emitter texture. So now the first thing that we need to do is add the flipbook texture to it. And it's as simple as changing the texture property right here. And I'm going to change it to this one that's available in the demo place that Roblox provided. So here I'm just gonna copy the ID and then paste it into the particle emitter texture property. And you can see that it looks kind of weird and that's because we need to set the flipbook mode. And since this texture is an 8x8, we also need to set the grid 8x8 option. And now nothing is really going to happen, and that's because we have the flipbook mode set to loop. So we need to change it to one shot. And you can see how it basically changed, but it's not looking like a proper fire, like I've shown in this example, and that's because we need to tweak few things. And let's start off by changing the appearance tab. So the orientation can be set to facing camera, but the size needs to be a number sequence and we want the fire to be happening on the bottom, and then transitioning into smoke. So I can set it to something like this for now. So it has a bit of a different effect, but it's still a little bit too high. But before we fix that, we can also set the transparency. And what we want to set the transparency to, we just want to add a little bit of transparency at the start. So it's going to transition like this and also do the same thing on the bottom. So it's not going to immediately disappear and act like a proper smoke. Then scroll down to the emission. There is the lifetime, and this is a range of how long the particle is going to live in seconds. So the minimum can be something like 1.5, and the maximum can be set to 1.75. And now we can see that we have, well, this. Something that's starting to resemble a proper smoke. 
but it's a little bit too steel. So what we can do is also change the rotation. And this is going to be the starting position that the particle is going to be at. So it can be set to like minus 30 to 30. And same with the rotation speed. This is going to be the random value that the particle is going to rotate with. And I like to set it to minus 10 by 10. And then we have the speed, which determines how fast the particle is going to move, that I can change to 2 by, for example, 3. And then the spread angle, we don't really need to mess around with this right now. If I set it to like 100, it is going to spread the particles on that axis. Same with the Y. So now it resembles like an explosion effect, more or less. But for the sake of this tutorial, I'm just going to leave it at 0. And we don't need to change anything in the emitter shape. Then we've already set the flipbook and the acceleration. We can set the smoke to accelerate by, for example, 2 on the y axis, so it's going to move up. Then the rest of the stuff, like the, for example, drag, what this does, it just gives like a drag effect to these particles. So this would be good if you had something like smokes on different stuff that just needs to be around one area instead of moving up or going with the wind. So I'm just going to decrease it to like 0.5 and the time scale is basically how fast everything from the particle emitter is going to calculate. So if 0.5 is going to slow down and if I change it to 0 it's not going to move at all. And now let me change the lifetime after changing all of the settings to something like 4 by 5. And now that everything slowed down we have this effect right now. And if this is still too high for you, you could for example lower the speed to 1 by 1.25. And now we're going to have this. And there are different attributes like the light emission, the light influence. These are pretty self-explanatory and you could mess around with these values to add a little bit more realism into this. Like normally there usually would be light emitting from the smoke since we have a fire happening on the bottom. So it's always good to add at least a little bit of this value. And same with the light influence. And whenever you lower the light influence value, there is going to be another property called brightness. And now the brightness is just going to determine the brightness of the light that the particles emit. And of course there is the color that you can change. If you just want to have a really dark smoke, then you can mess around with the saturation, as well as changing its color basically. And well, now we have a green smoke. And these are the settings on the example that I've shown at the start of the video. So this is the size number sequence. You can see from the window name right here. Then this is the transparency. And then these are the rest of these properties. And I was also messing around with this, for example, on a bigger part, because the particles emitter are going to emit from the whole thing. But this doesn't really look too natural. So you also need to keep in mind that the size of the part that has the particle emitter also matters. And I was trying to also use a different smoke texture or the flipbook texture, but this one isn't really too good and it wouldn't really work out. And then this is just a particle emitter with just a bit lower particle size. And then another example of these particles going a little bit slower. And some people might also be a little bit concerned about, for example, something like performance. And usually all the work that comes with the particles is done by the CPU, except if the engine is designed to handle it by GPU, by your graphics card, but mostly all the calculation that goes with this is through the processor. And I can feel a little sudden FPS changes here and there, but I'm really quickly just going to increase the cap to 240. From time to time I'm getting like 20 FPS drops, and that's because there is auto particle emitters that use these high resolution flipbooks. And it's of course going to be less performant than you using a normal particle emitter with just a static texture. But it's also going to look worse. And now there is the particle flipbook demo place, which has these different examples. So the first one is going to show you how the flipbook basically works with the particles being looped. So it goes from the 1 to 4 and then it goes back to 1. Then here are some smoke particles, I think. And I think I need to get a closer look to actually see them properly. But yeah, you can pretty much make some amazing stuff with these. Like you can see how smoothly these are basically switching. 
then you have like a ground smash that could be for example used for anime vfx and then basically these different sparkles and this example is also transitioning in color and that's something that i forgot to show previously that you can apply a gradient to the color property and it's going to make it so the particles are going to emit with the gradient then here is the smoke and also like a fire effect and I don't really have an idea of what this is, how it's saying incompatible texture. I'm just guessing that this one doesn't have a transparent background. So this is the demo place and I highly recommend that you check it out. And now I'm going to show just few examples of what people have been creating with these flipbooks. And now about the examples that I've talked about previously. So this one is made by Artblocks that I highly recommend that you check out. This is a really amazing creator that I should have also featured in my previous video about realistic Roblox. Since this guy, as you can see, makes some pretty amazing stuff. Where this example uses different particle emitters. One's for the fire, another one is for like these scorches that are like happening down here. And for the dust. And there is also, I think, two different ones for the smoke. And a link to his channel is going to be in the description. And another example is from Twitter from also two years ago. From the Roblox Developer Relations account. Where they actually show a demo from a place that's using these particles flipbooks. And since this is mostly a destruction part, I'm just going to show the end. So you can see how nice it looks compared to normal particle emitters. And also there is the particles flipbook release the forum post. On which I haven't really found any different information, except that there is a documentation now, but I just wanted to go over what people were already making with this. For example, this one right here. And it's like a particle sphere, that has a really nice effect. And this could also be used for anime VFX. Same with for example this one. And same with these different examples from the previous The Forum post, not the release one, where they are also making these different nice visual effects. Especially this one. But yeah, again, go check out my UGCs and leave a like and subscribe to support the channel. But that's going to be everything for today. So thank you for watching and see ya guys.